So this is a bit of a eureka alert. It's quite a moment. Scientists at the University of Nottingham have succeeded in turning carbon dioxide in the atmosphere into methanol. Now they've been at it for quite a while, hey, and they've tried lots of different methods of doing it, but none of them have been particularly good in terms of the volume of their production. But at Nottingham what they've done is shine sunlight onto single atoms of copper that are held in a matrix of carbon nitride and they've managed to produce an awful lot of methanol. And this of course is paving the way for green fuels of the future. The build-up of CO2 in the atmosphere and rising global temperatures accelerating climate change is something that everybody's worried about. And of course the big issue is the fuels that we use when we burn them, we create carbon dioxide. But if we can cycle that back into products and the products can be used again and again, we set up something called a circular economy around them. And a circular economy means that we won't, in effect, be generating waste. Now, a circular economy and the benefits of it are not something that everybody's unaware of. Everybody is totally aware of it. But the problem with it has been that things like production of hydrogen, for instance, has been done by the cracking of hydrocarbons and has released a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere. Being able to take that CO2 and turn it back into a fuel that we can burn, produce CO2 and then take the CO2 again and use it, well, that's obviously earth shattering and a real game changer, which is a phrase I absolutely hate to use. Now the paper only came out a couple of weeks ago and it uses a photocatalyst. So that's where the sunlight is beamed on a semiconductor material to excite the electrons. And these electrons travel through the material and react with carbon dioxide and water to make products like methanol. Of course, this has been tried with many materials, but the problem's always been the efficiency of the charge carriers. Now, as their photocatalyst, what they used was carbon nitride. They took some carbon nitride, heated it up, spread it with some copper atoms using a magnetron, and got incredible results. And what amuses me more than anything is that we've already made graphitic carbon nitride from urea on the channel and there are videos for that. They're quite old actually, so if anybody's interested, I might update them. We've also made copper nanoparticles on the channel. If we could combine the two, then there's a chance that we could actually reproduce this experiment and have a catalytic, or rather a photocatalytic way of generating methanol from water and carbon dioxide in the air. Now the paper is open access and I've put a link into the description so you can have a read if you want to, but what they say is in their approach they used melamine to control the material at the nanoscale and developing a crystalline structure allowed efficient interaction with light and sufficient charge separation in order for this to work efficiently. In order to get some idea of the efficiency, what they did was measure the current generated and their form of graphitic carbon nitride was 44 times more effective than other forms of carbon nitride. And adding just one milligram of copper to every gram of gra carbon nitride quadrupled the efficiency. But it did something else as well because a lot of the time what these catalysts will do is just produce methane. Of course that is a greenhouse gas but their catalyst immediately started producing methanol. And we have looked at methanol as a fuel, and in my opinion, methanol is a super fuel. But I have done a video on discussing methanol as a fuel. So apart from being a huge step up on what went before in this important reaction, the catalysts used have to be sustainable. Now predominantly, a lot of the catalysts are rare earth or expensive like palladium or platinum. But here, what's being used is copper, nitrogen and carbon. And they're all earth abundant materials and so very much cheaper. And being so much cheaper means that they can be scaled up in terms of production. And of course there is the step of understanding how those materials work in terms of photocatalysts for the production of methanol from carbon dioxide and water. And understanding those reactions means that they can be expanded to a whole other area of production where we are still using expensive materials and making the very production process expensive. All of this 
comes from that research paper and I found it really quite fascinating and it has just been released and it's certainly very interesting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.